welcome to our Russian Rhapsody program, song, dance, and flights of fancy. We extend our warmest greetings to all of you and give our sincere thanks to Jane, Sarah, Rebecca, Inga, and all the Western Public Library and Music Committee for keeping music going during this challenging time. Song, dance, and flights of fancy. In putting this program together, we were inspired by the idea of song, and from song to dance, and from there to flights of fancy, which we are all in need of during this difficult time of the pandemic. Since the 19th century romantic era of Russian music is suffused with all these refrains, we sought our inspiration for this program there. Song in particular has always been a large part of Russian music, from folk songs to liturgical chants of the Russian Orthodox Church, Jewish klezmer music, and, in the last 150 plus years, opera and art song. In our program, we will focus on Glinka, Tchaikovsky, Aronsky, Glazunov, and Rachmaninoff, sharing our interpretation of their music and also brief contextual anecdotes about the pieces to make the tapestry underpinning this concert. For all our concerts, we also enjoy choosing art that we feel has a synergy in some way with the music. So for each piece, we have also chosen a work of art that we feel complements the music. We begin with Sergei Rachmaninoff, a Russian composer and pianist born in 1873. The year he published his famous vocalese, which we will play first, was 1915. This was the year he suffered the death of his good friend and fellow pianist and composer, Alexander Skriabin, which troubled him greatly. Yet despite this, he composed his timelessly beautiful vocalese as the final piece in his 14 songs, Opus 34, the first 13 of which were set to poems written by Russian poets. In contrast, vocalese was written without words. It was meant to be sung with just one vowel sound of the singer's choosing, relying purely on the beauty of the melodic line to connect to the listener. The lack of lyrics lends itself to the cello and piano as a dialogue, allowing the song to take on a deeply personal meaning to all who hear it. As you listen to it, what does it evoke for you? The dance we follow this with is Rachmaninoff's Oriental Dance, likely written in 1891 when he was a student at the Moscow Conservatory. In A minor, it is fluid and captivating, with an opening theme that is then morphed into a variable and evocative flux, but which always returns to the A minor theme. The piquant pizzicato at the end is another endearing touch. In choosing the artist to meld with these pieces, we turn to Russian Jewish painter Marc Chagall, born a decade after Rachmaninoff, in 1887. We chose an early work of his, Bride with a Fan, for vocalese due to its simple beauty and as it is a tribute to the love of his life, Bella Rosenfeld, who he married in 1915, the year vocalese was published. For Oriental Dance, we chose Chagall's Eye in the Village, as it was painted early in his life, similar to Rachmaninoff's Oriental Dance, and it encompasses music, Note the woman playing violin upside down in the upper right-hand portion of the painting, as well as folk art and whimsy.
Our next composer, Anton Aronsky, was also a Russian pianist and composer who taught Rachmaninoff, who he admired greatly. He was born in 1861, and while little is known of his personal life as he never married or had children, and he died at the relatively young age of 45 of tuberculosis, it is known that his mother was an excellent pianist and who taught him, and his father was a doctor and cellist who encouraged him in music. The first piece we will play is his Petite Ballade. Ballades are typically thought of as narrative songs. Aronsky's Petite Ballade is also a dance as well as it is in the swaying rhythm of a waltz in three, as you will hear. For this piece, we chose Russian artist Mikhail Vubrel's Swan Princess, as we could imagine her dancing as she heard the ballad. Vrubel was born in 1856 and is considered the greatest Russian symbolist painter, particularly known for his depiction of the supernatural and mystical. For the second piece by Aronsky, we are playing his lyrical yet energetic Oriental, and for this we chose Rubel's Oriental Fairy Tale. Like the Petite Ballade, Aronsky's Oriental is also in three, and in addition to the virtuosic flights of fancy interspersed throughout, there is also a second, softer, dance-like dialogue between the cello and piano.
we turn next to Alexander Glazunov for a song, more specifically his minstrel song. Born in 1865, Glazunov composed Chant du Minstrel in 1900. Written originally for cello and orchestra, it is meant to conjure the image of a traveling performer wandering the countryside, playing her or his own music. It commences with an introduction by the piano. The cello then begins, singing a plaintive and soulful theme, which pervades throughout. For an artist, we chose Nikolai Bogdanov-Belsky, born around the same time as Glazunov in 1868. Best known for his genre paintings, Bogdanov-Belsky painted Symphony in 1920. We chose this painting as it depicts singing and music around a piano, tying in with the theme of song. Our 
next two pieces are by Peter Tchaikovsky, born in 1840. He wrote the first piece we will play, called Pezzo Capriccioso, in 1887. The piece is at once deeply romantic, encompassed by the slow introductory part at the beginning, and also highly virtuosic. He wrote the piece for his friend and wonderful cellist Anatoly Brandikov. The subsequent piece by Tchaikovsky that we will play is his Nocturne in D minor, originally written for piano in 1873, and then in 1888 arranged for cello and small orchestra, also for Brandikov. A nocturne is a song of the night, and Tchaikovsky's D minor nocturne has a simple yet haunting melody, followed by a more lilting section in the middle, and then returning eventually to a reprise of the melody with a lovely intertwining second melody in the piano. The artist we chose to pair these pieces with is Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky. Born in Moscow in 1866, Kandinsky helped to pioneer Russian abstract art and also understood the deep connection between music and visual art. We chose Kandinsky's Composition 4 for Pezzo Capriccioso due to its strong contrasting colors, flights of color and fancifulness, and its emotional resonance. We chose his Lyrisme Nocturne, also known as Accent in Pink, for the Nocturne in D minor, due to its and the Nocturne's timeless beauty.
We end with Mikhail Glinka, considered the founding parent of Russian classical music. Glinka was born in 1804. He was the first Russian composer to earn wide recognition for Russia in the music realm, and his work inspired the next generation of Russian composers, including Tchaikovsky, Aronsky, Glazunov, and Rachmaninoff. The song, A Nocturne, that we play first, was originally written for piano solo and was published in 1839. It bears the nickname, The Separation. Lovely and plaintive, Glinka wrote it for his sister, Elisaveta, who was away in St. Petersburg at the time he composed it. For the next piece, A Flight of Fancy, we turn to his D minor sonata, written originally for viola and piano. Glinka himself played both piano and viola, and then subsequently arranged for cello and piano by Dmitri and Oksana Yablonsky. While it was written when he was only 20 years old, he considered this sonata movement the best of his pre-Italian works. The lyrical cello component of the piece is deep and rich, while the piano part is both rich and virtuosic, almost concerto-like in areas. The artist we chose to pair with Glinka, while not Russian but Norwegian, is Edward Munch. Born in 1863, Munch was enthralled by Russian author Dostoevsky, and indeed was found dead with a book by Dostoevsky at his side. For the nocturne, which Glinka himself titled The Separation, we chose Munch's Separation from 1896, depicting a woman leaving while the man in the painting appears to be forlorn and clutching his heart in sorrow. For the next piece, Glinka's D minor sonata, A Flight of Fancy, we have chosen Munch's Starry Night. This painting, created in 1922, depicts the coast of a beach resort in Norway, which Munch loved. It captures his love of nature as well as the idea of freedom and the beauty of the night sky and the fanciful escape of dream.
Thank you so much for having us, especially thank you for the Western Public Library and the Western Media Center today. We were so happy for you to tune in today on your Sunday afternoon and, and afterwards as well. And we very much look forward to playing for you again in person soon. Take good care and stay healthy. Thank you very much.